That is the foundation of a good trading strategy. So this is 10 times stronger after a large negative shift. Okay, welcome back with another episode of Sharp Education. Again, we are venturing away from the path of building into machine learning for a little bit. I'm just going to be doing some more exploratory studies because you guys seem to like it. I enjoy doing them, and that's actually the only two reasons. So let's get started with a new one. Um, this is just going to be an example of the type of work I would do sort of in college, trying to come up with a, a trading strategy that could work consistently in the long run. And it's really easy to think you found a good trading strategy without code. So, but we're going to actually test this programmatically. Um, what I want to do is I want to, I'll show you. We're going to call it volume weighted standard deviation because volume weighted price action, <coughs> I feel like we've already, it's already understood at that point that it's not going to work for us. So, or at this point. So I'm going to be pasting in our functions <coughs> and loading in our data, same as always. And the strategy approach is going to be really similar to what we always, to the structure we always use, where we create a column for our rules, create a column for our strategies. So now what I want to do is make my own technical indicator, more or less. And We've already established that technical indicators don't work because they're all built on moving averages to an extent. We've already test we've already tested every single moving average crossover combination. So my understanding is there's not gonna be a a technical indicator built on moving average changes that is going to provide an edge, regardless of what you are taking a moving average of. You'll notice in the money flow index, we were taking sort of a volume weighted moving average of price changes organized into positive and negative flows of money. Now, this is a couple extra layers of complexity on top of just price, but price is still a factor. And we already know that price on its own doesn't help and volume we, we can also conclude that volume isn't correlated with movements either. And it also isn't correlated with more important movements. So people, a narrative that's pretty common is when a price movement occurs with high volume, then that means you can, it's more valid than a price movement that occurs with low volume. That's not true. That just means there's a bit more disagreement happening in the process of that price changing, but it doesn't, it's a false narrative. It's an easy narrative, but most of the easy ones you'll find in this space are designed to sell you something. So that's the truth. Volume, it's, it's coincidental when it comes to forecasting. Great. So right off the rip, we already have our changes included for each of the columns. And what I'm going to look at today is the close change and volume change distributions. So absolute percentages are sorry absolute numbers are bad they don't provide a lot of information because like a five percent change for one or a five dollar change for one asset would mean very little for another and vice versa so let's take the distribution of the both this figure and plot plt dot plot or please do that, hist, data frame, close, change. Looks like volume can fluctuate quite a bit um, on a day-to-day -day basis for volume. Wow, 48,000, 480,000, 521,000, yeah, yeah. A lot of fluctuation in volume. Now here, I want to identify the strongest price changes and the strongest volume changes. So define big price movement. So this doesn't need to be too complicated. Pandas has built in standard deviation and mean functions uh, included in the package. So for our close change column, what we can do is First of all, define the standard deviation. So STD 
it's a bad acronym, but it is what it is, is going to equal data frame close. Whoops, I forgot to include these parentheses at the end here. So the standard deviation of our close change is 1.17%. All right, so that means 1.17% will be here, 2.34 will be here, and 3.51 uh, will be here, I think. I, I don't know. Uh, and then after we get to that 3.51 range, we're in that like 0.3% left of observations are in these tails. So now let's, instead of doing three standard deviations to cover 99.97% of the or 99.7% of the entire data set, let's just do two standard deviations. So we're working with the top and bottom 2.5% of our study. Um, let, yes, so let's go... Hmm. I want to do this for both price and volume. So price STD, or close... STD and volume. Okay, so the average. Wow. That's very interesting. I'm also going to do this for mean. So I'm going to get more information about them, the average movement and the standard deviation. And I'm going to just change STD to mean. It's the only difference. And we're also going to change the name of the variables to be AVG instead of STD. BG, control C, control V, control C, control V. Okay, so this is interesting. The average movement for so 0.04%. So that means very, very rarely. Okay, so for the S&P 500, the average daily price movement is 0.04%. And the standard deviation is 1.17%. I'm going to reorder this because I don't, I guess it doesn't really matter. I, the, the printing is not good, but the average volume percent change is 13%, meaning on average volume has increased daily by 13% because there have been some insane percentages here. I, I bet if we used the median for volume, it would go way closer to zero. So I'm going to check what that looks like. Median. Yeah. So that's way more normal looking. Um, the median for volume is actually 0.5, negative 0.5. We are going to keep using the mean here. No, we're not because just so abnormally distributed. So part of this technical indicator is going to look at close change average and close change standard deviation. So the average close change is 0 0.04, which makes sense because if you just buy and hold, you eventually make money. The daily average price change is positive, but not super big. And the standard deviation is 1.17%. If you take three of those 1.17%, you will cover 99.7% of all the observations we have in our distribution. I'm going to get rid of this plot for volume change because after looking at it, I didn't like the distribution of it and working with it is going to be a pain in the rear. We can still look at volume as a tool to help us later on, but the truth is I don't I don't like it um, and I don't really want to include it for this because I think it'll make it more confusing than necessary. So now that we have our volume, 
So now that we understand the closed change distribution, we can only take strong ones on the positive or negative end to give us a positive or negative signal. So we've defined the big price movement. So I want to make data frame big. Great. And I'm going to make this a little better. Um, I'm going to do go down and then do this. Put that right in here. So it's just one big function and I'm going to call it instead of big positive and big negative, I'm going to do big movement. And I'll do big movement dot value counts and we should see something interesting should align with what we have when I run everything. No, big movement is not right. Great. So now we have a column designed specifically for large movements according to the standard deviation of closed prices. Great, and now that we have our big movement column, we can add a moving average column as well. We can add as many columns as we like. But the foundation of this is gonna be like dramatic price movements. Now, let's... So what I wanna do is I wanna check if there is a relationship between really big price movements and following price movements on average. So what we can do is make another column for data frame day after. After. And just shift that, and that's going to be data frame big movement, big movement dot shift one, just shift. So let's take a look at data frame after we add that column. Right, so we're looking at tomorrow's close price after the big movement. So what I want to do now is do data frame dot loop. So now we have all of the columns where we have big movement as one. And the day after is here. So I want to do day after. Day after. So now I have a data frame that shows every single following day where the big movement occurred the day before. Um, what that means is I can look at the average close change on this day by just taking so let's do positive large positive shifts it's going to equal this and then we're going to do large positive shifts close change e dot mean and see what that gives us. Huh. So after a really big positive shift, we have on average a negative movement afterwards. That's really good information. Now, what if we found this same information, and I know I'm getting pretty exploratory with you guys, for negative one. Negative one, and called this large negative shifts. Super cool. Now we know that following these movements that occur two standard deviations away from the mean on the S&P 500, the day afterwards shows some sort of reversion. So this could be the foundation of a maybe effective trading strategy. So say we're just screening for um, big price movements and then taking the opposite position the day afterwards. That is the foundation of a good trading strategy. Following blindly a technical analysis strategy, I don't support it. This is really cool to me because you remember the average price movement across all days was 0 0.04. So this is 10 times stronger after a large negative shift. Really interesting. I'm actually going to leave this episode open-ended. I want to see what you guys come up with in the comments for what to do with this information. 
Do you think we should just buy at the open and sell at the close of the following day? Are there is there room for accelerating the insights from just taking this simple standard deviation? What technical indicator would you use on top of it, if any? I just want to hear it all. And in the further episode, if I like one of the comments, I'll do further investigation into that inquiry. And I encourage you guys to do these inquiries or to look further into your questions yourselves. Because, again, I am posting all of this code completely for free on the Sharp Research Education page. Uh, As well as taking you guys through synopses of these studies on The Slice, which is my new newsletter. Um, I encourage you all to sign up. There's going to be a lot of good insights from studies like these. I'll also be giving insights from my artificial intelligence model, Sharp Edge, which is a proprietary model. I'll be giving away some, some information for free. Yeah, just trying to build a community of smarter traders, people that know what they're doing. Um, and I think if you can have a conversation about this and tell me where we should go afterwards after encountering this really interesting information, then you're in the right place. So I encourage you to sign up for the slice. Thanks for following along. I appreciate you being here. And until next time, stay sharp.